Kidney disease is a bad disease. If you're a patient who needs dialysis, there's a lot of things that you need to know and they're not telling you these things. And if you know them, it will make a difference in what you're gonna do. That's the whole point of this conversation. Patients who have kidney disease and go to dialysis centers for conventional three times a week dialysis, only live for an average of five years. That's twice the death rate of prostate cancer patients, three times the death rate of breast cancer patients. Terrible disease. And if you're waiting for a transplant and you're over 60 years old, chances are more than half of the patients waiting will not survive long enough to get an organ. We need to do an understanding of what the cause of this problem is that causes you to die so quickly on dialysis so that patients will understand the alternatives. And that's what we'd like you to understand today. When you dialyze three times a week in a center, not only are you doomed to shorter survival, but you also don't feel good while you're receiving your dialysis treatment. And the reason for this is because it's a very roller coaster ride. You wait two or three days for poisons to build up and then three or four hours we take them out. The same thing, every time you come for dialysis, you build up toxins, you get sluggish and feel tired by the time you get there. And then they take all this fluid out and they do dialysis in just a few hours and you feel tired afterwards. The downtime after dialysis is significant. Patients lose a whole day of their life every time they go to the dialysis center. And this doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to be tired all the time. If you start taking your dialysis treatments more often, you will end up with better energy. You'll feel like you have less fatigue, no downtime after the dialysis or minimal, better appetite, better sexual function. So we believe that for patients to get back to a better quality of life, they need to take their treatments and do it more frequently. There's no way around that. So why are dialysis patients having so much heart disease? Why are they dying of heart failure? The reason the dialysis patients have problems is because of two things. One is they accumulate too much fluid before they get to the treatment. And in doing so, they end up stretching their heart muscles, which results in stiffening of their heart muscles. It ends up with thickening of their heart muscles. The second issue is that when you get to a dialysis center, the facility is obligated to take you down to your dry weight. They're obligated to their schedule. So it doesn't matter if that's not good for you to take off all that much fluid in that short of amount of time. They have to do that. And when they're taking fluid off at a rate that's faster than the safe speed limit, what does it result in? Little tiny heart attacks to your heart. Not detectable by you or your doctor or the technician. It's happening, but you don't see it or feel it. And this is what causes scarring in the hearts of our dialysis patients. And if you look in the long run, this thickening and stiffening of the heart muscle, this scarring that's caused by these mini heart attacks, what do those two things result in? Sudden death, which is the most frequent cause for our dialysis patients to die, actually. So these are not inevitable problems, but they are the consequence of infrequent three times a week dialysis. The way you can get this problem taken care of is to do dialysis more than three times a week. And that's what the message is again. You can't get enough treatment on a three times a week schedule. So let's talk about the killer gap. The killer gap is the two days on the weekend when patients don't receive dialysis. And what's the consequence of not receiving dialysis for two days in a row? That on Mondays and Tuesdays, the death rate and the hospitalization rate of dialysis patients doubles. It's inevitable when you build up more fluid between treatment, more toxins, and you wait two days without treatment, there is a consequence. The consequence is very obvious. Hospitalization and death rates double on Mondays and Tuesdays. And is this avoidable? Not in a three times a week dialysis schedule. On the weekend, patients cannot restrict their fluid enough to avoid the complications of fluid overload. It's too difficult. If you're looking at what happens the fluid is resulting in patients ending up with water in their lungs and going to the hospital short of breath on Mondays and Tuesdays. It's the most obvious sign that the conventional three times a week paradigm for dialysis is not good for patients. It may be good for the business schedule, but it's not good for your health if you're a dialysis patient. And the only way you can avoid the complications of excess fluid and toxin overload is to do your treatment more often, three times a week will not be enough. So if you want to avoid the killer gap, there's only one way. Don't let the gap exist. Dialyze more frequently. So what's the solution to our problem here? 
The solution is you have to take your dialysis treatments home. There's no way in a conventional three times a week dialysis center that they're going to accommodate your need to be dialyzed more often. And for you to get treatment at home, it means you're going to have to choose peritoneal dialysis daily or home hemodialysis. If you ask kidney doctors, if they had to be on dialysis and couldn't have a transplant, what would they do? Over 90% say they'd like to be on home hemo. And the doctors don't yet prescribe that. Only 1% of their patients are on home hemo. And what's the disconnect? Because the doctors aren't familiar enough. They don't have enough experience with it. It's a relatively new treatment. But that leaves you, the patient, having to figure this out for yourself sometimes because the doctors aren't making the recommendations that they probably should. And for you, you're coming to this website to get this kind of information. And on this website, we have the testimonial of many patients. And one of the points that needs to be made is that it's scary. It's not easy for a patient to adopt the need to control their own treatment. And for people to go home, there's often a barrier that they're just afraid that they can't do it. But we have been successful here at Home Dialysis Center at helping patients overcome that problem. We help you to transition from in-center dialysis to a home modality. We're trying to accommodate your needs and customize our training and our treatment to what your personal needs are. And our goals are simply to customize treatment to maximize the quality of your life and to improve your health quality. Patients who want to have the best health quality have to take their treatments home. And if you're asking What's my experience? My experience is that the only patients I've had who survived more than 25 years on dialysis, they were my home patients. I have patients now who have been on hemodialysis for over 25 years, and one of my patients is 38 years now on home hemo. So there is an opportunity to impact your life and to have a better outcome here, but you have to do it by taking your treatment home. Home dialysis centers is a vehicle for you to get home. We'll train you on whatever modality, whatever kind of technology you want. We adapt to all of them. We have customized training in terms of where we train, how often, where we'll come and do it in your own home, can we provide assist. So these are the things that distinguish us. We provide the most experienced group in Southern California in providing home hemodialysis actually. And my message again, if you want to protect your health, you want to have the best outcome, you have to take your treatment home. And Home Dialysis Center's website here is an opportunity for you to figure out how you want to avail yourself of home dialysis services. Take your treatment home, you'll feel better. Home Dialysis Center is your vehicle to get there.